Tiger fans are starting to arrive. We're live at the SEC Championship game. KOMU 8 News at 6 from Atlanta starts now. football team is just two days away from its showdown with the Alabama Crimson Tide in the SEC championship game. Good evening, I'm Brittany Peeper. We have reporters in both Atlanta and Tuscaloosa tonight with team coverage of the big game, but we'll start our team coverage with Jim Reek in Atlanta. Brittany, thank you very much. We're starting to see a few Tiger fans. We're starting to see a few Alabama fans. Not really as many as I was expecting, but what we are seeing and hearing are Georgia fans. They're not bitter, and they do acknowledge the fact that Missouri is here for the second straight SEC championship game. But on the flip side, they're not giving Mizzou any chance whatsoever of beating Alabama in the Georgia Dome Saturday afternoon. Last night, I got an email from the SEC. The conference is very concerned about counterfeit, counterfeit tickets for this football game. I then put one of our reporters, Rachel Whittle, on the story, and she joins me over my back left shoulder at the ticket office at the Georgia Dome to tell us what the story is all about. Rachel. Fans are rushing to get their hands on one of these as game day approaches, and the SEC and Georgia Dome are warning fans about fake tickets. I spoke with officials today, and they told me what sets these actual championship tickets apart from scams. There are no digital tickets, there are no PDF tickets, there are no Ticketmaster stock tickets. All of the tickets will look just like this for all 72,000 seats. Special designs on this year's SEC championship tickets set them apart from counterfeits. Here's what you need to know. Make sure the ticket is textured. The SEC logo should be a hologram. The front and back of the ticket should be printed in full color, and no ticket should have the same barcode as another. So when you get your ticket, run your finger over the white print to make sure that it's raised, and then tilt your ticket back and forth to see the word Southeastern Conference show up in the SEC logo. Really, at all big events, there's lots of counterfeits, but especially at our event, because of the high demand for tickets, we, we see hundreds and hundreds of counterfeit tickets every year. The best way to find out if a ticket is real is to get it checked. If you are walking around downtown and someone approaches you about buying tickets and you think it's a good deal, have that person walk with you to the ticket validation window before you purchase tickets. If that person won't walk with you or don't want to go have the ticket validated, that should be a red flag to you. The ticket validation window moved this year because of construction on the south side of the Georgia Dome. So now it's on the north side. Maybe you can see it a little bit behind me. There are some gates there. It opens this Saturday, game day uh, at 10 a.m. Reporting live from the Georgia Dome for the Mizzou Extra, Rachel Whittle, KUMU8 News. The Tigers and the Crimson Tide have only met once since Missouri joined the SEC, but the relationship between these two coaches goes way further back than that. Let's flash back more than 40 years ago when Gary Pinkle and Nick Saban were teammates at Kent State. Well, I vividly remember talking about coaching and how he was interested in doing it and, and I was interested in doing it. And uh, just kind of, you know, kind of funny how things work out. After finishing their time on the field, they moved to the sidelines and began their coaching careers under Kent State's head coach, Don James. Well, he had tremendous influence on me. We all know that. I think Nick, Nick certainly speaks very highly of Coach James also. But just last year, Coach James died. You know, I, love, I loved him and uh, feel very fortunate. And I'm sure Nick would say the same thing, that you know, he was a very significant part of my life. Now his legacy lives on through two of his brightest students. To win at the level he's winning at consistently, I think it's unprecedented. Coach Pinkle, Gary has done a very, very good job there. So Saturday will be a tribute to their shared mentor. He'll be watching from heaven, you know. Oh, he'll be rooting for me. I know that, because he always liked me better. Believe it or not, Coach Gary Pinkle actually has nine more wins than Nick Saban. Hello, everyone. Chris Gervino live inside the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, where tomorrow afternoon the Missouri Tigers meet the Crimson Tide of Alabama for the SEC championship. Mizzou played here last year and lost to Auburn by 17 points in the title game. Today, the Tigers arrived in Atlanta late this afternoon, and they held a brief walkthrough, just looking at the stadium, getting used to the field. And, of course, it wasn't anything really earth-shattering for most of the guys on this team because Mizzou was here just one year ago. And one person who really is not surprised that Missouri is here 
is Alabama coach Nick Saban who seems to think pretty highly of the Tigers from a distance. Uh, their team did a great job of uh, overcoming you know a lot this year to win a lot of close games which tells you what kind of competitive resiliency they have and uh, they're probably the best defensive team right now in the SEC the way they're playing and um, not a surprise to me that uh, they're here uh, this year um, and that they've been here two years in a row. Back in May of 2011, as many of you know, a devastating tornado hit Joplin, impacting hundreds of thousands of lives. And since then, the city has worked to rebuild and reconstruct that city. And just a month before that tornado hit, another tornado hit Tuscaloosa. But just like Joplin, that tornado showed Tuscaloosa's true colors and brought the city together. Patton Realty was one of many Tuscaloosa businesses impacted by the 2011 tornado. By the time I got there at the hospital, there were some things missing, a lot of stuff missing. And then, and then when I went under the side up there, uh, my building was missing. Luckily for Patton, there was a nice surprise under the debris. All of our files and folders right over here, and they were completely full when this was over with, and we were very grateful for that. Storm tragedies such as this one can create a sense of support in communities. Pat noticed this from her Crimson Tide. Our football team at the time was with, with the cleanup and help that they gave and how, how they brought together a community and how they were brought together by, what, by the efforts that they made. Even in the wake of this tornado, that didn't stop Patton from appreciating a witty moment from a random helper. Patton also mentioned that one of her agents worked with Nick Saban's sons to rebuild houses as a part of Habitat for Humanity. And just like many of the people here in Tuscaloosa, she gave me a roll tide before I left. Thanks for sticking with us here in Tuscaloosa. We'll be in Atlanta tomorrow for SEC championship coverage. Reporting live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama for Mizzou Extra, Jay Wallace, KOMU 8 News. Alabama really grabbed control of this game from the coin toss, actually winning the toss, uh, taking the football to start the game, scoring on the opening drive, building a 14-point lead. Mizzou, to its credit, uh, battled back in the second half, at least briefly, trailing 21-3 at halftime. The Tigers did make it a one-possession game at 21-13 late in the third, but then Bama scored early and then often in the fourth to win it uh, going away here, 42-13. to Joining me now is KOMU 8's Tyler Griever, and, and it, it was a one-sided game, clearly, on the field. It, it, this was a mismatch, it appeared, and yet, bigger picture coming into the game, it, it seems that Missouri, again, on a big stage, missed an opportunity. Chris, you're right. You know, the Tigers have been here before. You know, they knew this stage. They knew the caliber of their opponent. They even know what it, what it would take to win this game. What they did not know is that it would all seem so familiar. It was another chance for a title, and before you knew it, the Tide took it away. I'll give them that. I'll give them that. They're the best team I've faced this year. Early on, Mizzou lost arguably his best player in SEC sack leader Shane Ray. Oh, look at this. Boom! Officials ejected him after calling him for targeting something Ray disagreed with. You feel like you were slighted, of course you're going to be angry, so, you know, it is what it is. With Ray or without him, Alabama owned the field in the first half with quick, methodical drives tiring Mizzou out. I just felt like the defense was on the field a very long time. I mean, our linebackers don't just alternate like that, like the corners do, so it could have been some fatigue in some other areas. In the second half, Matty Mock and Jimmy Hunt gave the team some breath with two long balls that led to 10 points and cut the deficit to eight. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was always going to be there. I mean, you know, we, we played great in the second half, and, and I mean, we, we came up and, and got within, I think it was eight, and then, uh, I mean, we just shot ourselves down and the tide crashed while they were down with two straight touchdowns. You know, if you know, the ifs you could have. And, and so that, that, to me, that was, uh, those two were two statement drives from their standpoint. Statements of a conference champion, something the Tigers had to watch and hear yet again. Now, Chris, I understand none of us really expected Missouri to get back here this year, but the fact of the matter is it's another time getting to a conference title game and really just not showing up for it. And Coach Pickle acknowledged that. He, he took the blame for the team falling short for so many years, but it's just another missed opportunity to take this program to a new level. 